Um, welcome. Uh, I'm going to be talking today about polyvagal theory and why it is important for therapists, for their clients, and in a way for the world we live in. Uh, polyvagal theory functionally uh, uh, enables us to emphasize the importance of physiological state in our day-to-day -day lives. And it treats physiological state as an intervening variable, something in between the context and the stimuli in the world that we are reacting to and our responses. So based upon our physiological state, we'll respond in different ways. And what polyvagal theory does, if I were to kind of summarize it uh, and say that it's a theory that transforms uh, a hu the human narrative from documentary emphasizing events and objects to a pragmatic quest for safety with an implicit bodily drive to survive emphasizing feelings. And I guess the best way would be to contrast it with ACEs or adverse uh, childhood experiences, which documents adverse events, which is very important, but it really functions on documenting the event and not inquiring about the individual's feelings. So polyvagal theory is actually a theory that attempts to translate our underlying feelings into physiological constructs that explain how we react and why we react to the world in different ways. And to do this, we're going to need a new vocabulary and a whole set of new constructs. And that's what I'll be talking about today. Welcome to Navigating the Nervous System, a polyvagal guided approach. I'm Deb Dana, and I'm gonna take you on a brief tour of the autonomic nervous system. So polyvagal theory is the science of connection, or what I like to call the science of feeling safe enough to fall in love with life and take the risks of living. We're gonna look at the three organizing principles of polyvagal theory, co-regulation, neuroception, and hierarchy. Co-regulation is what we call a biological imperative, meaning it's something we don't survive unless we have. Neuroception is a way the nervous system detects without awareness, and hierarchy are the three predictable pathways of response, ventral vagal, sympathetic, and dorsal vagal. So what do we do with those three states? How do we understand them so we can use them and, and um, become um, introduced to them and become friends with them and then become an active operator of those states? So we put them on a ladder. This is the autonomic ladder, where again, we see the hierarchy, but we see it playing out on a ladder. Ventral is at the top. Sympathetic, we move down to the middle of the ladder, where there are less options and, and uh, our focus is more narrow. And then dorsal is at the bottom of the ladder. And you can see from that, that you know, little, little figure at the bottom of the ladder, I'm still on the ladder. Right? We're, we're never off our autonomic ladder. We're always on it somewhere. But from dorsal at the bottom, you can see it's a long way to get back to the top of ventral. 